Welcome back to Harmonious at Lunch. Got a fun episode teed up for you today. An episode of purpose. Topic probably we need to talk about more, but it's the center of today's conversation and I'm excited to dive in. We're going to talk to an amazing entrepreneur and we're talking to somebody in Germany today, which is super exciting. Just adds up. We are having a little bit of a tech lag, so bear with us through this conversation. But what is Harmonious? Why are we even here this is the disruptive architecture to look at your business in an entirely new way so that you have context around all of the seemingly useless content you hear in the world. Without it, this podcast would be noise, but we're going to tell you how to hear this conversation, how to apply it to your business, and how to get your business growing to that next level. So let's dive in here. But first and foremost, welcome Nick to the show. Great to have you here. Hi, Brandon. I really appreciate you having me on. Yeah, this I'm excited about this conversation because I think a lot of us, you know, we are both millennials. Uh, if you want to identify that way, I we're about the same age, and I think it's a conversation that's prevalent with our generation. But it's about purpose and why you do what you do, and and having the motivation to to go to work and make a difference in the world. So, tell me before we get to what you're doing now, what kind of brought you to this purpose conversation? What what have you been doing for the last decade and a half or so with your life? Sure. Um, so as you said, I'm a millennial. And as a young man, I came of age after the 2008 financial crisis. So when I was graduating from high school and going to college, I wasn't thinking, oh, what do I want to do with my life? I was thinking, how do I survive? Which is really terrible. I really should have just picked a major I enjoyed. I love music. I should have been a musician, if I'm being perfectly honest. And so I got a degree in chemistry because uh, it was difficult and I figured it would pay well. And I found myself working in a lab doing the same process every day. Like you could have trained a machine to do what I did. I, I, didn't, I didn't get to use my mind at all. And I burned out. And uh, my next job, I was a financial advisor. And I, uh, I got my Series 65 license, I'm, I, I know enough to distribute financial advice for pay, but the clients that we served were all millionaires. And so in the back of my mind, I just, I had this, this, this earworm that said, this work doesn't matter. These people don't need help. And it really hamstrung my ability to perform. Um, I, I was let go from that company after four months and thank God they let me go. I was, I was, I, killing myself there. It was not the place for me, despite how much money they were paying me. Um, and so fast forward to now, I'm calling in from Germany because I studied abroad here last year. I'm in Augsburg, it's near Munich in Bavaria. And I just fell in love with the people and the culture and life here. And so I graduated with my MPA, which is basically a master's of business administration, but for the public sector. And I took a lighter and I held my degree and I burnt it <laughs> and, <laughs> and I completely started over. Uh, I started Nick of Time Digital Marketing so that I could build a purely online income and live where I like. Uh, so that was January. Um, I landed in Munich in October 5th of this year and it's going really well. Um, and I'm, I'm even getting to work with clients that fit with my purpose driven being. Um, my specialty is SEO and an SEO can help all kinds of businesses earn traffic and earn revenue for whatever they're doing. But my most recent client runs a development nonprofit in Tanzania. And so I get to combine my practical knowledge of Google search with my desire to do good in the world, because if, if Brett wins, then uh, the people of Tanzania win and they really need a win, right? Yeah, I love that. And, you know, I ask about what brought you here because it's different for everybody, but it's so cool to see, you know, I don't, it sounds bad, but really what like broke the camel's back and, and why you're here. I think a lot of us entrepreneurs, especially have a similar story, but it's so great to see someone who took that pain and they turned it into a passion. They turned it into, it's obviously your why, like you, you wake up in the morning, you know why you're doing what you're doing. And you're excited to do it. And I love that. And on the flip side of that, I think a lot of us have woken up and said, if what I'm doing doesn't matter, why am I doing it? Regardless of the pay, 
So I love bringing this issue to to the forefront, really, and just letting you know there's there might be another way for you out there. You don't have to just be a cog in a wheel. And that's what we do at, at What If, and that's the purpose of the, the harmonious architecture. So tell me now, we're looking forward where you SEO, SEM, you, you specialize in Google. Tell me how you help your clients. And these are people who also are impact driven. How do you help these people get found online, get seen? And, and what are you doing for them in the world? So the, uh, the, the Google search game is basically all built around keywords, as you know, Brandon, I'm sure you're familiar. Um, so however someone might be searching for your business, I will optimize your website around those keywords, I'll build content based on the questions that they may be asking so that when they arrive, they're learning from you and they're building this sense in themselves. Oh, you're an authority. You know what you're talking about here. Maybe I should reach out to you. Um, it's also, there's also an educational piece. If you have a really well fleshed out website that is built to talk to your clients, then you run through a lot of the objections you might have when you're trying to make a sale just by virtue of having put all that information out there when they research you. So I help with that. And uh, in the new year, actually even now, in the new year, because of all the changes with AI and the recent changes with the Google algorithm, uh, there was like an apocalypse in October or November. And basically all the small niche websites online took a hit and they lost traffic share to the giants and to even Reddit. Um, people tend, aren't really trusting reviews so much anymore. So they're even typing Reddit behind their questions because they're just really sick of spammers and liars and cheaters filling the Google results page with absolute nonsense. And so I am pessimistic about the future of Google search broadly. Um, the results page is getting more competitive. There's more sponsored spots. There's less organic spots. And I think the the product is actually getting worse for it. So I focus on local search because I don't see uh, AI answers in the search results really impacting the work that I do because uh, everyone's got, everyone still searches for local businesses the same way they always did. It doesn't matter if there's an AI that put a bunch of text on a website and that Google pulls from it and never sends you traffic. Um, Everyone's going to type in their phone restaurants near me or plumbers near me, and they're going to need to be able to find uh, trustable businesses and an SEO like myself who can manage the reviews and make sure that um, your service lines are up to up to snuff and that your service pages really speak to what you do and speak to your audience in a coherent story brand framework. Um, I don't know if you're familiar, Brandon, with story brand, but it's like the context for all the movies we've ever watched. A hero has a problem and meets a mentor who gives them a solution, who leads them to success and helps them avoid failure. You, you kind of fit your copy inside of that uh, framework and you position your customer as the hero and yourself as the mentor, and you just walk them through a sales journey in that way. And so I don't see local search changing. I think it's a moat. So I'm focusing my energies there. This is so awesome. You're first of all, yeah, I love story brand. I'm a huge fan. Side note, are you a, a certified guide or you just use the framework? I just use the framework. Okay. Still awesome. And I love it. Um, and the, something you said right there is, is crucial to the harmonious architecture in rad risk and defense. It's the R you said moat. That's one of the, the key differentiators that we use in risk and defense and also in ubiquity, which is uh, marketing and sales, which is also what we're talking about in today's conversation. It, Anything search engine optimization is usually going to fall in ubiquity, but that is such a key term, building a moat. I love that you serve small businesses. How do you help people or do you help people realize and define what their unique moat is in their business before you take it to Google and optimize their web presence? It's not something I explicitly do know. Um, I, obviously, they have to be really good at what they do in order for what I do to even matter. If I get someone to knock on your door and you don't answer, like I can't help, right? Or if or if you they you open the door for them, but they're really turned off by what they find, there's nothing I can do to fix that. Um, but as far as identifying a specific moat, uh, that's not something I fought through with my clients. Okay. I was curious because that's obviously part of the process, but I also understand how it's their responsibility or um, maybe a, a different 
a different element of the architecture could help them get there. Um, but okay, so that aside, you have maybe thrown down the gauntlet to Google, and I've never heard anybody say really what you just said about how Google is maybe declining in performance and long term you're not so excited about it. Um, is that kind of like throwing shots at the government? Like, is your life at risk now because you <laughs> you've attacked Google? This is this is new information to me. <laughs> Um, I, I certainly think it's going to make me a black sheep because the the mantra among SEOs is that SEO has been dying for 15 years and it just doesn't die. Um, but I'd rather be honest with the people I want to work with. And my honest assessment of how things are going is that I, I think it's getting worse. And I think the reason that Google is such a monopolistic powerhouse is just because no one's come along and outcompeted them yet. But the more they push revenue um, with sponsored ads, and the more they damage the creators who put all the information out on the internet that their AIs are going to scrape to generate their answers without sending appreciable traffic to their websites, the worse they're going to make their search results. Because there's not going to be any good reason for people to keep generating content if there's no one coming to their website, and you know, I don't know what they, I don't know what they think people are doing when they build a website. But not all of us can just be a hobbyist that talks about things that we love online. We all have to have uh, income, and that's what a lot of the internet's all about. And I think they've forgotten that. Um, it's certainly a little strange to criticize them, but I, I think it's perfectly valid to do so, and I think it's something most people feel as well. Like. Are you sick? Aren't you sick of scrolling past four sponsored posts every time you Google something? Like <laughs> nobody wants to see those. And on YouTube too. Yeah. Uh, well, they own you YouTube. Know, so I was gonna say it's it's you the sponsored Google and then the sponsored videos. It's right there. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So I hey, listen, I'm open to controversy. I love it. You heard it here first. Uh Google is under attack. So okay, now that Google's been attacked <laughs> on this show, now both of our lives are in danger. Well, as small business owners, as entrepreneurs. What's something we can do proactively to get our website and our content, um, you know, more in front of our ideal clients' eyes? What What are we doing on the internet wrong, and what do we need to do to fix it? Uh, I mean, their SEOs have a, a habit of making their work really opaque and complicated sounding. But if you want to earn traffic from Google, it comes down to good content, and it comes down to other websites that will link to yours. Everything comes down to those two things. There are technical details that someone like myself can help you figure out, either as a consultant that will give you homework to do yourself or as a done for you service, depending on where your time and resources lie in your business. Um, but something that you can do yourself is go get a, a keyword research tool. Um, I use Ahrefs personally, but SimRush works. Uh, Moz, not so much, but SimRush and Ahrefs are good recommendations. You might pay $100 and then just go plug in 10 competitors that are ranking in Google and see what it is that they're earning traffic from. And that'll give you guidance on what you should be focusing on. You know, we, we could have a really long conversation about top and middle and, and bottom of funnel search phrases. And we could talk about um, how to identify them in your own pure research. But it's just it's a lot easier to reverse engineer. So you, you go find what your competitors are ranking for. You geotag on your title and H1 tags. If that sounds scary, that's fine. It's, it's a really easy, easily Googleable, Googleable thing. You tag the service you offer, so plumber, and then you put your city wherever you are. And now your homepage is telling Google exactly what it is that you do and what exactly it is that you are. Um, the other mistake I tend to see is that a lot of small businesses will have one service page that covers everything. If you want to earn Google traffic, you've got to target one service at a time. So plumbing or HVAC repair or um, what have you. you. You can't rank for a bunch of unrelated phrases on the same page. So you've got to separate those out. Um, and then the other thing is to just have a regular plan for posting content on your site. Most businesses already have content marketing as part of their um, their marketing mix. And you can't just rely on referrals. Most business owners have figured that out and as they scaled and they've hit that next level. And to earn Google traffic, just do what you're doing, but repurpose it. 
So you can start with a Google optimized blog post and you can repurpose that for all of your social media channels. Um, I help people take a, a blog post and they can turn it into three or four posts. So now you've got your social posts for the week and you've got a post for Google and you're getting more bang for your buck without putting a whole lot of extra time into what you're doing. Yeah, that's awesome advice. And I think the, the first half of your answer there, um, I think you were speaking a different language, at least to me you were. And that's why I put Nick's website on the screen. If you want help with any of this, um, I put Nick's website up here. And I'm going to, after this show concludes, I will make sure to get all of the the notes and links and websites that he mentioned. So you're if you're watching, listening, wherever you are, all of those links will be in the show notes. So you can go um, use all of the tools that, that Nick talked about. So, um, you know, before we wrap up here, I think that is fantastic advice. Everything you just said, if, if you're not doing it, go do it. Prioritize content. Look into your SEO. See where you're ranking. See what your competitors are doing. And, you know, modeling is is the best way to get to the top and, and maybe even beat your competitors. So I love that advice from Nick. Um, let's tie this real quick to the harmonious architecture, and then I want to wrap up. Um, but this has been this has been a great conversation. I already mentioned we're talking about ubiquity a lot here. It's your sales and marketing everything you're doing on the internet, anything you're doing to get in front of your ideal client, ubiquity is being all things to your client where they are. It's not all things to all people in all places. That's a very key difference. Do not hear me say that. It's where your client is. You have to be prevalent and you have to be an authority in the space. You heard Nick say that too. Um, we talked about rad. We talked about building that moat, securing your little island of space in the corner of the internet, wherever you are. I love that Nick deals with small businesses and local businesses. I think that is, there's going to be a shift in the market very soon because people are di tired of the lies and just garbage that's so prevalent on the internet these days. And local businesses will thrive again very soon. Um, a number of other things we talked about, but very clear to me is Nick's sense of navigation. We talked about it in the beginning. It's his purpose, his why, why he's doing what he's doing. And he knows that that's clear with his clients as well. So if you're purpose-driven, you're impact-driven, and you want your business to make a difference in the world, you should probably reach out and go find someone like Nick, if not Nick himself, because he is clearly an expert in this space. Um, Nick, I want to thank you for for coming on today. I know you, you post a lot. You're on LinkedIn. Um, you have some stuff on your website people should check out. And, and I said, uh, go in the show notes as well. But what's what's that next step for you um for for someone listening or watching what's the first thing you want them to do based on this conversation to either see where they are with their seo or take that next step to be proactive about it what should we do the first thing to do would be to ask an seo for an audit so you don't have to come to me go to someone in your network because your network is a way of uh, knowing that you can trust who you're speaking to there's also a a reputation in the SEO industry of just taking your money and running. So start with a referral, go find someone you know you can trust and have them run an audit. They're going to look at everything you currently have and they're going to look at what it'll take to get from A to B. And if they're good at what they do, it's going to come with a roadmap that you could even implement yourself. So that's where I'd start. Start with an audit of your website. That's awesome. Thank you so much for that. And, and thank you again for being an amazing guest and shedding light on this admittedly confusing topic. I, I feel like I understand it more just from this quick conversation. So again, reach out to Nick, go in the show notes and take action on what you heard here. You know how to apply it. You know where in your business this applies. If you're struggling in this area, take the necessary action and go figure it out. And I want to thank you for listening, watching wherever you are. Make sure you like, subscribe and comment. If you have questions, we want to know about it. Put it in the comments. I'll get them to Nick. Nick will answer them and we'll get back to you. The whole point of this show is to give you a dose of what you need to help you run your business smoother and grow your business. And that's why I bring on awesome guests just like Nick. So keep those questions coming. Like, subscribe wherever you are. And we'll be back next time with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Thanks for listening.